time for Hobby Quick Hits. Hobby Quick Hits. A sports card podcast where we tackle the hobby's hottest topics in depth to help you navigate the sports card landscape and enjoy the hobby we all love. Here's your host, John Newman. Welcome to another edition of Hobby Quick Hits. The title of this episode, The Hobby is the People, possibly sounds familiar to you. It's the tagline to our older brother's show, Sports Card Nation. comes out on Friday's interview show. And when I came up with that tagline, I get asked that a, a lot about that. Like, how did I come up with it? And there's no real crazy story. I just, you know, thought about my career, if you will, in the hobby uh, and and all the stories and, and people along the way. And, and we all have those stories and different people in the hobby uh, that mean a lot to us or at different moments. And so that's where the Hobbies, the People tagline came from. But I never, I wanted to do an episode, a, a shorter episode on this uh, show rather than Sports Card Nation where not an origin uh, story. I did that, Dr. Beckett. Uh, did that on his podcast with me, but kind of talking about sort of my journey and my hobby and giving uh, those folks along the way uh, the proper credit uh, and, and where that hobby of the people uh, came from uh, for me. And so uh, that's what this show is going to be about. It's probably not going to be uh, super long, but uh, I wanted to sort of do a, a hats off uh, episode. Uh, if you will. So uh, with that being said, we're going to hear from our great sponsor, Mojo Breaks, and we'll be right back to start the episode after that. Hey folks, wanted to tell you about the best place to get some of your sealed sports card wax products. Great selection and some of the lowest prices on the web. MojoBreakShop.com is that place. Whether it's a box or a whole case, they're your guys and they ship around the world right to your door. The Mojo Break name is one of the most trusted in the hobby. From sports cards to Pokemon, their selection can't be beat. They offer daily deals and pre-orders. Who won first place at this year's Topps Rip Party? None other than Mojo Break. Their prices are already great, but here's a way to save even more money. Use the code QUICKHITS, that's Q-U-I-C-K-H-I-T-S, for 10% off anything on mojobreakshop.com. They also have a full-service card shop in Santa Clara, California. So if you're in the area, stop by. They're open seven days a week. So check them out at mojobreakshop.com. So I've wore different hats in the hobby. Started at seven years old with my first baseball pack in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, Then... You know, traded with my friends. Uh, I want to give a shout out uh, to them. Uh, you know, Brian and Joseph uh, were my two probably best friends that I collected cards with in my single digit years, if you will. And then I started going to a card store called uh, Seventh Inning Stretch. It was owned by a gentleman named Rudy Backstein. And I was, I went there, I was 12, 13 years old. I was there almost uh, every day. And uh, was there so much that uh, Rudy said to me, you know, why don't you, I, I, I should hire you. I, I, I could use the extra help and you're here so much anyway. I'll give you half cash and half store credit. And I wound up, you know, I spent not only the store credit, but probably what I got paid cash. Most... Most of my job was putting cards in order, uh, sleeving some, uh, putting vintage in binders, and making monster boxes. Uh, Then my role expanded to uh, Rudy did shows, and so I worked at shows uh, for Rudy. And when I was at the show, uh, I would sell some cards out of the cases, help him out there, and also make some monster boxes at the show. I got a sort of skill to make monster boxes rather quickly in a, in a rapid fashion. And uh, he hated to make those things, and so became 
my job and and I wanted just to get done with it so the quicker I did it the quicker I was done with it and could sell cards and sort of do that that interaction and, and whatnot now I was a shy kid believe it or not so I didn't do a lot of conversating with 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 people I, I mean I spoke to Rudy because I knew him but if I didn't know you real well I was sort of uh kind of quiet and uh you know shy but uh, still you know good at math and know knew how to, to do those sort of transactions and it was Rudy that really kind of got me into the business side if you will uh, of the hobby and many of my friends uh Brian and Joseph that I mentioned were like, man, you've got quite a collection now from working at the store, you know, what you already had, you should do shows yourself. And so I did. Um, I've told the story, so I, I, I won't go into all the details again, but I started doing shows and uh, Rudy, uh, you know, I had to tell Rudy that I was going to do my own shows and not work for him anymore. He wasn't very happy about it. I'll just put it that way. And for about a year, uh, I sort of got the cold shoulder, evil eye, if you will. After that year, he came up to me at the show and, you know, extended his hand to shake my hand and apologized and uh, accepted that apology. And we started setting up at these shows together. You know, I did my first show at 15. And so I want to give out the sh a shout out to Rudy because. He was the, the guy that gave me my start. Uh, I learned a lot of business acumen from him. I was in the store uh, working when a lot of those transactions took place. I learned how to, to, you know, while I was shy, I still learned how to interact with people and, and, and that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, if it probably wasn't for Rudy, uh, I probably wouldn't be where I am in the hobby today, quite quite frankly. Maybe not even uh, in the hobby. Another person I want to give out a shout-out to I, uh, is my grandfather, uh, Pasquale Capo Bianco. Uh, that first pack I talked about was a 1979 Topps baseball pack, and he actually bought me a few packs that day from the corner store in Brooklyn. And if it wasn't for my uh, me seeing the packs on the, on the counter... And me asking my grandfather about it, if he would have just kind of said, no, you can't have them, maybe this story has a different ending. But he said, hey, I'll buy a couple packs. Do you want them? And I did. And the rest is history. Uh, there's a lot of people I started doing shows with and setting up with. I can't name them all. But, uh, you know, those folks that I set up with at shows from the age of, 15 to 20. I uh, appreciate all the conversations uh, that we had uh, about life, not just hobby, but about life as well. I was a young kid, you know, obviously 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 years old. Uh, I learned a lot, not just about, again, not just about the hobby, but about life uh, from the people I set up with, uh, which were always older than me at that time. I was a very young dealer. Uh, I met a gentleman named Angelo Barnello in that show circuit. He was local with me. And we sort of like just kind of half jokingly talked about opening the store together. And then one day he called me up. Uh, we were on those terms. He called me up, said, hey, I found this location. It's on the second floor, but the rent is a great deal. I know we kind of batted around the store. What about doing it? What about kind of taking just talk and making it reality? And I said, yeah, I, you know, let me think about it. I said, we, you know, we need a lot of stuff. We need a cash register. We need showcases, uh, some other things. And it's, you know, going to add up. And so we crunched the numbers. We went to look at the location. It wasn't a big store. It was on the second floor. Uh, and we could put out an A-frame to draw attention uh, where we were. I was a little concerned about the location, but the rent was a really good deal. This was 1992. 
Uh, I was uh, 20 years old now. Now, Angelo, who became my partner in the store, uh, was about 12 years older than me. I believe he was around 32 uh, when I was 20. And so we, we started kind of figuring things out, what stuff may cost us, and we decided to, to take this plunge uh, together. And uh, I worked part-time, uh, and uh, initially I continued to work part-time uh, just to build up uh, sort of a, a war chest to buy some of the things we needed, from splitting the cost of brand-new uh, some showcases, uh, cash register, we had to put some shelving up, uh, obviously we had to buy wax, get, uh, you know, some of the accounts I had already with the uh, card companies, and then we had to get new ones. There were some that you had to have an actual storefront to get online with them. There were others that, as long as you were a dealer and had a tax number, they'd sell to you and send it to your house. And so we got all this stuff streamlined. Uh, the first year we spent more uh, than we made, uh, and and there was almost not a second year. Uh, I want to give a shout out to An Angelo's wife, Marie Barnella. Uh, she was sort of our accountant. She wasn't, you know, classically trained, but she knew what to do and, and helped us out when it came to some financial stuff. And uh, you know, didn't get paid other than the fact that Angelo own half of the business but you know that first year was rough and then we sat down and and had to decide if there was going to be a second year and uh, we decided hey we're going to give it one more year uh, and that second year was a huge one and uh, lasted uh, about six years for me until I sold out uh, my half uh, to my partner uh make a longer story short uh, about three months after I sold out to him uh, the store was uh, burglarized they just stole money but destroyed a lot of glass and uh, that was the end of the store and uh, uh, if memory serves me right uh, me and Angelo kind of uh, drifted apart not because we were mad just kind of you know I, I think he sort of got out of cards I think he he sold all his stuff and uh, never looked back and so we we sort of uh, fell out of touch but uh, wanted to mention him sort of in my hobby journey because he is uh, a big part of it uh, then uh, i did a lot of uh, show circuit around the northeast you know new york state pennsylvania uh, mass uh, no i didn't go to massachusetts connecticut uh you know did that sort of three state three to four state show I, I remember I did some Philly shows another guy I did shows with at this point uh, he kind of traveled with me and we kind of split tables it was a gentleman named uh, Dave Hayes he was a, a few years older than me but I was in the hobby lo longer and I sort of mentored him and, and helped him sort of build his business up uh, so to speak and so we did shows uh, for a couple years um then I really went uh, sort of exclusively online as, as eBay really became uh, super popular. Uh, and so I did that uh, kind of on my own there. Uh, and then, you know, podcast, you know met, fast forward to many years later, uh, podcasting became big and I sought out some, you know, sports card podcast uh, but at this time there was very very few and the one I, I really kind of gravitated to uh, was one you probably heard of called Fat Packs with Eric Norton and listened to it a lot when I was traveling to New York a few times a year to visit family my son would be in that usually in that car with me making that trip and my son uh, Jordan who at the time was probably 12, 13, 14 years old who knew my hobby history said, Dad, you know, have you ever thought of doing a podcast? And we would binge listen to, you know, Fat Packs. We both enjoyed it. And uh, I said, yeah, I thought about it, uh, but never, you know, never really uh, did anything. 
Uh, but uh, really appreciated what Eric did. Uh, another gentleman I want to mention, Dan Tatura, a friend of mine, who was working for ESPN Radio in Orlando, Florida. Uh, had some issues with ESPN. He wound up resigning and moving back here to Syracuse and started his own broadcasting company. Uh, I went over there on a Friday to do a segment that kind of tied in the sports card hobby and sports. It was supposed to be a one week only for an hour segment, one time only, and it became for 15 weeks in every Friday show. It's called Collectible Corner. And the only reason it stopped was I, I was off on Fridays from my job I had at the time, and that changed. I, uh, I didn't have Fridays off anymore. And so that was what launched Sports Card Nation. I, I had an affinity to doing that. I thought I did a, a halfway decent job uh, on my appearances, and I sort of missed talking about cards uh, on a on a radio show. And so Sports Card Nation was born. So I'd be remiss if I didn't thank Dan Tatora for kind of proving to me that I could do it. So I started Sports Card Nation, and one of the first guys that I reached out to was Eric Norton, someone I considered the OG. I've coined him the, the pod father, if you will. And I reached out to him and uh, was very helpful uh, to me in my podcasting journey. And I got to know him uh, real well. And sort of the kind of button us all up, you know, uh, now we're three years into the podcast. Uh, I've met a lot of other content creators uh, some that came after me. Uh, doesn't matter whether someone came after me or not. Uh, we're all in this kind of fraternity together. Most of them, not all of them, are very friendly folks that will help each other out. Uh, there's too many to name uh, individually, so I just will kind of just, you know, say generically that uh, all the people that I've met uh, along the way in content creation. We bounced off, whether talking about equipment, how we do our shows individually, um, very uh, important uh, in this journey. And then I want to mention, uh, not, again, generically, all the people that I've met uh, as well, from shows uh, to the two nationals uh, that I've been to recently uh, that you know have come up to me, and whether they've come up to me in person or send a DM or an email saying what the shows meant to them or they enjoyed the shows. That's the stuff that keeps me going uh, in this hobby journey. Uh, you know, I've done this a long time. Um, I still enjoy it. You know, uh, it's the hobby's a lot different hobby today than it was in 1979 when I got my start as a seven-year-old. This hobby's a lot different today. Uh, than the 20-year-old in 1992 that launched their the store, the LCS, with his partner, Angelo. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I wanted to mention and, and sort of go through this uh, kind of quickly. I didn't want to draw it out any longer than I had to, but mention these folks because all, all these folks and all these stories along the way have led me to where I am uh, today in the hobby. Not just... In content creation, but uh, in the hobby, uh, as a seller, I still do uh, card shows. I still sell online, but I really also enjoy the content creation and sharing knowledge and experiences, much like I'm doing on this very episode. So, to those folks I I, I mentioned, thank you for whatever your role was, big or small. Uh, for everyone that's uh, interacted with me to say the show's great or you enjoy it. And even the ones that said, hey, I didn't like that segment or I didn't like that episode. Uh, thankfully, there's less of those than the uh, I enjoy the shows, but uh, all in all, I appreciate uh, that feedback. It's, it's, it's those things that sort of fuel the passion to keep going uh, on the content creation. Uh, I want to kind of close, too, uh, with thanking, you know, another show I do is Hobby Hotline. It's on Saturday mornings and, and soon to be uh, Tuesday evenings. Uh, and we're expanding a host. 
But I want to thank all my hosts that, uh, you know, past and current, that I've done that show with. That show's a blast to do. Uh, it's fun. And, uh, you know, that's a, a team effort, uh, no doubt. And uh, uh, I enjoy being on that show, being part of that show, and all my co-hosts uh, on that show. Uh, again, that's another thing that, you know, f- fuels that passion and drives me to, to do that stuff. It's a, a lot of fun to do. So I want to thank uh, all those folks uh, as well. Uh, like I said, even if even if they're no longer part of that show from the original uh, cast, that they're all part of its history, and I want to acknowledge them. Uh, for those podcasters, you know, again, I'm not going to mention names in this case because there's there's numerous ones, but those that reached out to me, much like I reached out uh, to Eric Norton and asked me for advice. I sort of tried to pay that forward as well. Uh, Thank you for even uh, considering me someone you would ask and pick their brain up. So uh, I just want to acknowledge those folks as best I could. Uh, Thank you. Thank you out there as well. Uh, Without everybody, uh, you know, 38 years or whatever it is now in Hobby, I lose track. Uh, uh, I wouldn't be where I am today. So uh, there you go. Remember, uh, you know, that again, that's where that tagline came from, right? All these stories, how they intertwine and lead lead me on this journey, uh, which I'm still in the process, not done yet, right? Still going. So uh, the hobby is the people. All right. Thank you for listening to another episode of Hobby Quick Hits. Want to give out our social media, starting with our website, which is www.sportscarnationpodcast.com. Facebook, you can follow us at www.facebook.com forward slash sportscarnationpodcast forward slash. Twitter, we are at sportscardnat1, so it's sportscardnati1. Instagram, at Sports Card Nation Podcast, or you can email the show hobbyquickhits at gmail.com. Again, thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.